Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna play a little bit of Rimworld tonight, um, which is a game that I think suffers a little bit from the fact that as soon as you tell anybody the name, they just go, "I'm sorry, what?" Uh, but it is a colony simulator set on an outer rim world. Ta da! And uh, the I've just realised the cursor settings are not being shown on this, which means you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing a lot of the time. I think this is actually a game where the cursor settings might be important, so I'm just going to figure that out. Okay, yeah, we've got cursor. Brilliant. Um, I've never done this before, streaming, recording, gaming, anything like that. Uh, so, obviously this is going to be rough as fuck for all of us, but you know. Let's give it a shot, let's see what we can do. I'm going to try and keep within range of the microphone, I again. Mic discipline, not something I have. Uh, I'm aware that you know, starting a starting a video streaming thing during a fucking pandemic lockdown is, you know, um, it, me and every other white boy at the moment. But whatever, I've got the time, I've got the equipment, and RimWorld is a nice game. Uh, it's it's all made by one guy, Tynan Tyne Sylvester, who's put the astonishing amount of time and effort into making this 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 ludicrously complex game and then the other people that make it are the people who make mods for this game the mods are astonishing uh, the modding community is astonishing there's um, some really 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 uh, fucking wacko stuff out there but most of what we've got here today is just quality of life stuff so um, various things uh, like things that will you just make your pawns pick things up as they're moving around and um, you know, extra furniture, whatnot, stuff like that. Um, Rumbas. Rumbas. Because, you yeah. um, know. Mostly this is all quality of life stuff. There's various bits and bobs. Um, canned food, things like that. Uh, and we're going to add a couple more still. So things I've just uh, subscribed to but haven't added yet. So heating, uh, centralized air, air heating, cooling. This might work. I've tried mods like this before that were a bit... Mm. Um, so we'll give it a shot. We'll load that up. Utility columns is a way of holding your ceilings up. Very useful. Mm, don't care. Uh, don't care. Yeah, might be useful. Uh, probably not going to get that far. So I'm thinking about just starting a colony of... Um, I don't know. Let's build a few characters. Let's tell some stories. That's the thing about this game. You, you, you play... You play a game against a, a DM, against a dungeon master, and essentially it's just a, a way of generating, you know, events uh, and and things that happen in the game uh, according to a particular schedule. So you can play either in a very chilled way, where you know you'll get events once in a while, uh, raiders or a trader or, a, or pirates, something like that, or you can play it as uh, one of my friends does where you know somebody is actively more or less actively trying to kill you uh, sending earthquakes and raiders and wolves and wargs and plagues uh, every five minutes while you try and and, and, and build a um, stable life and to be honest that sounds far too much like the real world right now so we're going to play it on a much more chill way than just go cottage core we're going to build you know a farmstead we're going to build a little commune and uh, we're going to make it poly because we're, everybody's poly. Everybody's poly in in Rim World. We've decided. No, we have a mod uh, called rather pointedly called Rational Romance, uh, which re I think re uh, balances the uh, sexuality thing to make with sort of various slightly more realistic um, uh, balance of sexuality. So basically, most people are bisexual. Some people are gay, some people are straight, and some people are asexual, and I think that's about as deep as it goes. No reflection on it, on any other number of genders, etc., etc., but um, that's just, a, it's a programming thing at this point. So, um, there we go. All pawns will now have uh, a trait indicating a sexual orientation, either asexual, bisexual, gay, or straight, which is nice. It's a nice, um, it's nice to have that in in a game, even if you it's modded in, it's nice that somebody's put it in there. But also, we can have poly people, which is lovely. 
isn't it? So uh, the other thing that poly people, of course, need is, and I wish this existed in real life, poly beds. You can have bods, uh, beds that uh, you can have bods as well that can accommodate many people, but you can have beds that can accommodate many people, up to five people there. And you know, a super king is nice, but five people in a bed, fuck yes, that's what we're after. So we're gonna have poly beds. Uh, Zombie Land is a game, is a mod that I've been playing uh, previously in RimWorld, and it is just brilliant. It's a fantastic mod. I'm not going to play it this time. It's 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 completely a game changing mod. You literally are doing a, a, a whole zombie game there, and likewise the weapons and f uh, security stuff. We don't need it. Um, we're not playing. Uh, we're not playing for, for you know uh, anything particularly harsh or violent here. Uh, <laughs> likewise, no leaders, um, no kings, uh, no masters. With the uh, sexuality mod, you can sort of change everybody's. Uh, you can change change the sort of basically the the percentages of, of what the chances are of people being certain sexualities. And again, there's only those four there. We know, of course, there are many, many more. But uh, it just you know, it's more fucking lines of code in it. Uh, chances of a pawn being polyamorous? Mmm, one hundred percent no. Uh, oh, I don't know. We could just let's be let's be let's be full and poly. Everybody's poly all the time. Yes. Hmm. Uh, modify for cross species romance. Okay, obviously this only matters if you're playing with alien races. We're not. We're not playing with alien races uh, in this game. Do you know what? If you look at the mods page on Steam, many, many people will be turning this slider all the way to 100. And that's fine, because it's in a game. But those people should not be allowed to work at NASA. Well, anyway. Maybe we'll just increase the little bit of... We'll make the world 121% nicer. There you go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There you go. More dates, more hookups. At a 21% 20, increase. We can live with that. Uh, I, okay, we've got to have some <laughs> we've got to have some people in the world who aren't poly. 85% poly, that's the world I want to live in. 85% poly, there's got to be some mono people out there, I guess. Uh, let's start a new colony. So we're going to muck around with the settings of this game. I muck around with the settings of this game a lot. I also cheat, I should tell you now, I cheat the fuck out of this game. I, I, um, well, I've got all these mods in it for one thing. I, I, um, create extra resources. I use the, the developer tools to add a whole bunch of shit in this game. I'm not playing this game to win. I'm playing this game to build. I'm, this is Lego to me. Um, and so, you know, the, the developer menu adds a whole Lego store of things I can do and uh, ways to change the game and muck around and I'm going to use it to its full um, to build a ridiculous nonsensical thing um, but not too much probably in this game since I'm doing this as a streaming thing I probably won't like firebomb huge parts of the map just to get rid of beavers or stuff like that <laughs> that does happen and there is a reason for the beaver genocide uh, <laughs> oh, sentences you never thought you'd say out loud mm, title mm, report of blacksmiths I don't know what we're going to call that. We're going to call this um, Lockdown Spectacular. Spectacular. Fuck me. Uh, I am very smart. You know what? Fuck it. Uh, let's have alpacas. We're going to start with five alpacas. Start with Electric Crematorium and Jade Sure. sure. What the fuck is all of this? This must be mod stuff. Um, <laughs> this is this is the game. You can start with two hundred chinchilla fur scattered randomly about you, and uh, you've got to tell yourself a story as to how that happened. I'm going to play for this one, uh, Cassandra Classic and Builder, because we do want to be building a thing, but we want to have some interest in the story as well. Merciless mode. That sounds bad. Reload any time mode. You can save and load the game at any time. Yeah. Commitment mode. We can only save on quitting. So this is kind of fun. Yeah, fuck it, let's do that. So basically, this is like this is a this is Iron Man mode. This is uh, one save. So if somebody dies, somebody dies. Except if I don't want them to die, and then I resurrect them. But anyway, shh. Do you want a sparse world or a crowded world? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> let's just leave that right the fuck as it is. So we're just going to have a look around and 
decide what kind of place we want to be. So I have a preference in these kind of games for uh, in these kind of in this game in RimWorld for putting my settlements. Um, this is a hex map, so you just literally pick one anywhere you want. I have a preference for putting my hex maps in hillsides near rivers, like this kind of map, uh, because rivers are good for generating power, and I like the way they break up the map. Um, they may be good for other stuff, I don't know. And in mountains, you get and can mine out caves. And this isn't bad because there's a place there. But I do that kind of thing all the time. So let's try something a bit different. Let's this one. Maybe that one. Alright, I thought I'd found a perfect little site. Maybe I don't. But somewhere along this river. So here we are on this side of the world. Um, there's a little inland sea, which I quite like the look of. And I like the idea of being, you know, on the on this big river going down to a, to a, to a, a lake, a big inland sea. I think that's kind of nice. I feel like that's, you know, if this was a populated game world or whatever, there'd be, there'd be people trading in boats up and down this river and that sort of nonsense. So, let's see. Um... This one looks like it's going to have some mountain and some clearing. Uh, this one looks like it might have a bit more mountain close to the river, which can be interesting in terms of caves and things like that. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with this one and make it a slightly bigger map. Auto seasons and let's go. So it's time to talk people. Let's talk about our people. Going. So this is all just random, random creation. They've got random backgrounds, which is really uh, the sort of randomization elements of all of this are, are absolutely brilliant. Like it's such a it's such a detailed game in so many ways, because, for example, you can read that Saunders was born during a time of unrest on his homeworld as climate change threatened mass starvation and flooding. Hmm. As he grew up, the situation worsened. Billions died, and peaceful states descended into anarchy. Hmm. Saunders and his parents did whatever they had to to survive, and so as a result of that background, he has plus four shooting, but minus three artistic and minus three intellectual. Because he couldn't go to school or develop his creativity, because he was forced to, etc. You can fucking read. Uh, let's randomize them by Saunders. Don't care. Now, what you get here is the the little flames and the big flames are passion. For something, so she's interested in this. She is extremely, burningly passionate about crafting. That sounds pretty interesting. Now she uh, does have a couple of things. She is incapable of violent things, so that's kind of a good thing. I'm, I'm okay with that. She's got high medical skills. She's got high cooking, high plants, um, and she's a burning, uh, got a burning thing for crafting. However, she's real low on artistic, social, and intellectual, which is okay. I think we can live with that. Um, I should say nothing is implied here. This is just me thinking about how I'm going to build a colony full of people um, that uh, that all sort of you know fits all together. But like these seem like good and desirable traits for a person. She's polyamorous. She's a night owl. Uh, she likes to be up during the night, and sleep during the day. That's actually a really useful trait in this game because you can you can stagger shifts almost of people. Um, so if you've got people who enjoy being up during the night, that's great because it means that you don't just you don't have so much downtime where people are just not doing anything. You'll see how a little bit more how scheduling and everything works. Oh, this is so. This is nice. Sometimes you get them with relations to uh, other of, of, of the people involved. Um, in this case, doesn't matter quite so much because this person wouldn't be coming with us. They're in the left behind crowd. So what's going to happen is these five people are going to crash land on the rim world and start a colony. That's how the game begins. So childhood pyromaniac, this is a problem. Pyromaniac uh, people tend to just be a problem later on. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what to say. Um, it just, you know, they won't fight fires as well, which is unfortunate because people, that's kind of helpful. Ah, though, she is kind of handy in a lot of other ways, so she's got good passions for stuff. Pyromaniac, psychopath, bisexual, polyamorous. Mm, she's sounding too much like a bad characterization in the Daily Mail, so let's randomize her. Space bartender. Hello. Yep, okay, that's a lot of passion. That's a lot of good spread of skills. Incapable artistic, poly, straight, pretty, and kind. Oh, okay. I think we're taking Ronin Shield Lawless. <laughs> I think we'll have him. Ronin Lawless, aka Shield, a space bartender. Hmm. Fuck it. I love it. I love it. All right, let's let's give her a random nickname. Let's say she is called um, 
he looks around frantically at things on his desk. Ginger. Uh, there isn't ginger on my desk. There is a bottle of... Um, weird. There is a bottle of kombucha uh, that has ginger in the label. Um, also, Ginger the Deep Space Miner. I don't know. It sounds like a song. Uh, okay. Ivo, manager. Hmm. Do we need a manager? Okay. Body purist. Ivo believes the human body is limited for a reason. To him, artificial body parts are unethical and disgusting. Well, fuck you. So, with modding a game, you can get some, you know, irregularities. I didn't really think about this or the numbers that were in those columns when it said prepare carefully. So we have 13 odd jade crematoriums and a whole bunch more repair shelves. Um, which is weird. So we've started with a whole bunch of stuff that, um, that we're down to now a reasonable number, I think, of, of crematoriums and repair shelves and alpacas and so here we are this is our world um, we have uh, this lovely river we've got some cave systems we've got what looks like some interesting ruins there um, we've got various things growing we've got these steam geysers and cave systems more and more oh yes and the entire top half of the map is a mountain which is brilliant, because that means you can tunnel into it, you can build caves, you can build uh, whatever the fuck you want, really, deep into the mountain. So that's lovely. So that's nice. We've got a big bit of mountain, and we've got some growing land, we've got some farming space, we've got some wild animals, and we've got a bit of river. So it's quite a big river, actually. This is going to require some bridging at some point. So for a little while, we might actually be confined to this side of the river. But that's fine. We've got plenty going on. And we're going to start by building a shelter. Bam. Costume change. Okay. The music in RimWorld is lovely. You probably can't hear it very well. I think I've finally got the level sorted where you're not hearing so much of the uh, game that you can't hear me, because obviously that's why you're all here. Um, anyway. I think we've got to find somewhere to go. And I don't think we can go here because you know these guys. These guys aren't fun. That mushroom looks cool. I'd like to go check out that mushroom, and that mushroom. But uh, these guys, they're not fun. So we've got to stay away from this part of the world for a bit, which is unfortunate because we've got some good growing land down here. But I think if we head up here and into this area, we've got a good chance of uh, some good growing land. We've got cave. We've got some shelter here. Maybe cave systems we can get into. That's how you tell people what to do. The thing in this game is you don't tell people, you don't like select the person, right click on the thing and say do it. That's not how it works. You don't get to control the individuals that way. You organize their lives via this and via this, which is kind of a scheduler. Work, recreation, sleep, set the schedule stuff. Um, what I'm going to do just quickly is set up a, a basic work schedule. Um, so work, sleep and recreation. The first thing we're going to do is um, do an hour of recreation in the morning. Pretend they're all doing yoga or something. <laughs> going to do for the minute. We have some people who are night owls and stuff and we can fix that, but we'll worry about that later. Um, and then we should be able to build a shelter. What we're going to do in the meantime though, we can't really get here. What have we got over here? We've got just a load of guinea pigs. Just so many guinea pigs. That's great. We've got some steel. That's also good. We've got all these mushrooms. Interesting. Um, so this is shelter. That's cool. This is shelter cave. Uh, we don't see any weird mechanoid creatures in there which is good to know there probably will be some in here somewhere just like buried um, these guys being out in the open is kind of interesting but we're gonna have to block off this cave at some point I think this cave here is gonna be a useful place for us um, to expand into 
So we're gonna probably build a roof over all of this. So we've got some wood, so let's start building. Let's build us a structure. Um, well, do we wanna just start building a roof on this cave? Yeah, why not? Okay, if we start building, Oh, I have gold mode on. Let's turn gold mode off. We'll do this realistically for as long as I can be bothered. We may as well be ambitious here and just start building, trying to build uh, rooms. Uh, we'll figure that out when we come to it. Um, but yeah, this looks pretty pretty well pretty set up for, uh, for bedrooms and stuff like that. So we're going to go with that for the minute. Uh, we're going to be troglodytes living in caves. Sounds pretty great. Uh, now the animals. Okay, that old packer is called Demon. Pag wow. Pagan, Demon, Penny, Butterball, and Emma. Okay, I would die for them all. And there's a warg right here, but I think they're okay, generally speaking. Animals. So we want to keep the animals in a different area. And that's in a loud area. Um, and so we're going to make a new area called Paddock, because that's where you put animals. Folks, honestly, <sighs> there's work to do, and you're like, oh, whatever, fine, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I haven't started this well. I didn't, uh, again, I haven't played this for a while, didn't think about it. We haven't started with any food or any, like, wood, which are two of the main things you tend to start with. We have some wood, we've chopped down some trees, so we're okay for that, but we literally have zero food. <laughs> we've got a crap load of jade, but fuck all food. And what you usually start with is, um, packaged meals from the escape pods. So, we are going to create some. We're going to go to... where is it? Try to place near thing. And we're going to find... meal. Package survival meal. There we go. So, we're going to scatter... for the sake of convenience, I'm just going to drop them right into our storage area. So we now have 13 meals. That's not quite enough. So I think we need a kitchen dining area. And I think the best place to do it is probably here. Smack in the middle of everything. We've got access from all sides. So this, I think, is going to be a good place to build into. The best thing about... The best thing... I think I've said this a number of times now. One of the best things about RimWorld is that you're creating a story. Um, and you're telling a story with all of these characters. And... It gets to a point when you play one of these games, when you play one of these campaigns, for a better want of a better word, um, that y it really matters when these people are in danger or or or, or are injured or are uh, or die. Um, it really matters to you, um, which is which is an amazing thing. It's it's an amazing like thing for a video game to do that. I think in in twenty twenty, you get a sense of of like belonging with these people that is really um is really is really effective when for example raiders are threatening and, and you've only really got two people who are who are any good at shooting and mccready is already down because you know he got a took a warg bite in the leg earlier in the week and tina can go shooting but you know she you also need her here on medical duty and then the only other guy you've got is the it's you get into these people's stories, these little these little guys. Um, it's quite something. So we're going to see what happens with with York and Shield and Ginger and Rose and Tina, and there'll probably be more at some point. Because one of the things I find with this game is, after a while, especially the way I play, I get into a certain amount of specialization, and I need you know somebody cooking a lot of the time, and somebody uh, doing research a lot of the time, somebody kind of always on medical duty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, balancing that all is kind of a it's kind of a task, and we're probably going to need more than five people. We'll see. We're going to see. We're going to see how it works with five. And uh, 
you can get more people you can lose people more more easily than you can get more people but you can capture people uh, make them prisoners and eventually recruit them uh, you can buy slaves if that's your whole thing um, that's not you know that's not how we play in this house uh, you can also just fucking cheat characters in and, and occasionally games the the game will throw in a random um, you know another drop uh, drop ship or something like that and, and a new person will come along and you can they can join you <laughs> let's meet the team um, who have we got this is York so she yeah so this is what you get for each character you get a little thing that you see you can see exactly what they've done their social stuff uh, all this stuff about them which honestly I very rarely look at uh, this you occasionally that you can find that in their inventory they're carrying around a whole bunch of stuff that could better be used elsewhere but so it goes um, this is their relations with everybody else which is all nice and friendly at the minute jolly good it usually stays that way to be fair sometimes then people will break up or whatever and these are our traits and our bios okay so York now this is where we would start to think about setting their um, their work tasks and what they should be doing because York has certain traits and certain things she's good at. York can be somebody good to do cooking and somebody good to do crafting. For example, somebody good to be looking after plants and somebody good to do medical. The trouble is that's a lot on one person. That's a lot of things for one person to be good at, much like real life, so we're going to have to split that up among people. And this is really interesting. This is the part that's, that's always fun because you have to manage people's moods. You have to, like, well, manage them. You have to create the conditions for them to be in a good mood. And things like food and rest and recreation help with that. Beauty, comfort, and the outdoors also help with that. So comfort's not going to be great right now. They're sleeping on stone floors in, cave, in dark caves. York tried to, uh, you know, tried to create a little bit of flirtation, I guess, with uh, with Rose. And didn't, didn't strike. Didn't get there. So she's feeling a little bit bad about that. And you can add operations. You can <laughs> again, if you want to organ harvest your way, if you want to be pirates and capture people and organ harvest and take slaves, you can play the game that way. You can do it. I'm not going to lie. In my Zombie Land game, we took prisoners. We needed we needed parts. We sometimes installed bionic parts in those prisoners. Stuff happened. Uh, let's think about what York can be doing. So cooking we definitely want to be doing now we're going to set manual priorities this makes life a little bit easier first things first we're going to set everybody to one on firefight one on patient high priority now doctoring we definitely want york doing it and we want so york has doctoring of 10 uh has medical skill of 10 and rose has a medical skill of three so we want her, we want Rose to be doing it as well, but we don't want her to be the chief surgeon. Um, so she's going to go at two. That's how the priority system works. So I'm going to fill this out and get everybody sort of kind of sorted out, and we'll uh, and we'll check out about these people. Right? <laughs> covered we've got everybody set up with some priorities we've got um, got a few things here which the, the reason these are red is because the skill they've got the skill level they've got is very low but I've given them some um, desire to do it because they've got a passion for it so hopefully they'll be able to what that functionally means that passion is that they will learn to do it faster so they will improve those skills faster um, take all the metaphors for real life that you that you want out of this by the way <laughs>
event we have dun 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 a mad squirrel we have a fucking squirrel that is uh, has come into my house and uh, is with has the 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 immortal rind to be attacking Tina so we need some uh, some action on this um, now somebody is melee Ronan is good at melee uh, who else ginger has a bit of melee in her um, and they're nearby so ginger and Ronin you are drafted and that means I can I can tell them what to do drafting someone is the only time you can tell them what to do and what I've told them to do is kill the squirrel sorry um, and now they're undrafted they can go back to doing what they want so in the aftermath of the mad squirrel incident we have uh, one dead squirrel and one injured Tina who um, unfortunately we do need somebody to look after who is our doctor um, that would be York. York, stop meditating and prioritize tending to Tina. Food, maybe? Not sure. We can eat squirrel. Uh, this person's bedroom is now no longer a bedroom. I did not plan that out very well. And we have just about the start of a kitchen. And in a kitchen belongs, of course, the kitchen table. A nice kitchen table. We'll have chairs for eight. So we'll see how many people we get in time in this interesting little cave alpaca place that we've got going on. So yeah, let's see what happens with the adventures of... Um, at a more normal speed. Let's we'll see what happens with the adventures of Tina and York and Shield and Ginger and Rose. Um, and <laughs> there are Packers, Demon and Pagan and various others. Um, I'm I'm kind of enjoying playing this game again. I'm enjoying telling the stories that, that's going to come with it. Um, and if, uh, if it's something people are interested in, I'll probably keep recording it and putting it up here. Um, it's kind of a weird time right now never know what's what's going on people are stuck at home a lot if you're bored enough you'll probably watch just about fucking anything and that may include me uh, me playing RimWorld and telling telling stupid stories about about these people and their alpacas I don't know um, but yeah if you've enjoyed this cool I'm glad I'm glad have a great day <laughs>